message to my heart. This message is very, very important to you and it's extremely important to me because we all are living it, but I'm consciously living it. It is a process the Lord is, He puts all of us through, but He consciously uh, putting me through it and letting me walk through the process. And I wanted to share it with you. Amen? Amen? We must learn to reign in grace. Or grace, the Bible said according to Romans 5, 21, grace has to reign through righteousness. Yes. Yes. It must. I'm telling you right now. God said he doesn't give his glory to another. Amen. Which means that every one of your life is a poten potential investment of God. And he wants to be, get glory out of that investment. <clears throat> think of God as an, um, not think of it, he is a creator. Think ye of someone who built things, like build, 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 uh, buildings. Now every building or bank he built, he expect a return. <coughs> he don't ever do something without expecting what? A return. return. Amen? So when he saved you, you understand? God is love. There's no if or maybe. One part is yes, because he's love. But he saved you not just because he has nothing better to do, he just wants to save you. You are saved for a specific reason. And it's for him to get the return on his investment. Amen. If you want to know his investment, read Genesis 1.26. After God had created everything, you look around the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and he said, let's create man in the image of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he went on. He said, and let's give him dominion yes. over the realms, complete authority. Yes. So that which he gives dominion and complete authority, he is waiting to get recompense for what he gives. So imagine you're a landlord, or God is a landlord, and he makes you superintendent of an apartment building of his business. But he expects the reason he put you in charge and the things you're supposed to take care of and make sure they're in good standing to be of such. We know this from Genesis 2, chapter 1. The Bible, the Bible said, God approved. You understand? Of actually, it's not it's Genesis chapter 2. 2 verse 1, he rested. So it's the last verse, I think it's verse 31, said, he approve of everything after he made it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he won back thing in its approved state. Yes. Mm -hmm. So part of your redemption, I'm sorry, is not just to save you. Mm. It's so he can get what he put into you out of you. Yes. Amen? Amen? In Matthew, we're going to look at this today, Matthew chapter 13, verse 43, the Bible said, then the righteous... Amen? Those in right standing with God will shine like the sun in the kingdom of God. Amen. In essence, God didn't stop until you shine like the sun in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. We know the kingdom is the government. God said, until you are operating, you understand? Shining in a state of excellence, amen? At, at the Hebrew word, say, yatir, mm -hmm. in, in his government, he got, there ain't going to be any stop. Now, I'm telling you this plain. This is not going to happen until grace reigns. This cannot be done without grace. This cannot be done without grace. Grace need to reign that God get you to shine, amen, that he get his investment return, his recompense. Hallelujah. So anyhow, about four weeks ago when we talked, we had started out and we had looked at three scriptures the last time I preached. It was Romans 5, 21. We had looked at 2 Peter 3, 18. The apostle Peter encouraged us because he understood the theme. So he said, we must grow in grace. Mm. You must grow in the formalization and the actualization of grace. And we had looked at Psalms, chapter 84, verse 11. God said, no good thing I will withhold from you. I will give you present grace. Yes. In the moment, yes. I will give you grace. Yes. So I don't have to hold it back. You see, if he don't give you present grace, he can't give you what he wants to give you. You have to withhold it because things are not right. Say, God want to give me present grace. God wants to give me present, present grace. grace. He want to make sure I shine I like the sun like the in the kingdom of God. In, kingdom. in his kingdom. In, his kingdom. in Jesus, name. In Jesus name. We're going to pick it up this morning. And I want to start out by just picking up. We can't go back over all the scripture. But I want to pick it up that you get the theme at hand. And this is a very young time. And for every Christian, such a message is imperative. The comprehension and the insight of it. It's extremely important if we're going to have any success. Mm. You see, amen. If not, you'll get by. You're saved. Nobody <coughs> will, can take away, you understand, your salvation. Mm -hmm. The question is, why were you saved? Are you maximizing the reason God, you understand, redeem you? Mm -hmm. This is why judgment begins in the church. Mm -hmm. The Bible said in, in, in Revelation 2, verse 34, you understand? The Bible said, every man, amen, will be paid according to what he has done. 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 
What you have done? Not, not all you were safe. Save is to give them. You understand? But what did you do with being saved? It said the same thing in First Corinthians, I think, chapter six. Every one of us have to appear before the judgment seat of Jesus, right. amen, to give an account of what we did with our time while we were on the earth in the body. Yes. Mm. Everyone. Not just the church or the sinners. All of us. You are, look at somebody and say, you're saved for a purpose. Yes. Saved yes. for a purpose. Yes. And you're yes. saved yes. with purpose. Yes. 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 With purpose. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. We need grace to reign, and God needs grace to reign. One of the things you must always work hard at is understanding the will of God. Because in the will of God, you, if you get this principle, you will start to get the concept of season, period, and time. A lot of times we are working in a season or a time where God is transitioned. Yes. So you need to understand the season, the period, or the time of your life. Or more important, where God is at that point. Yes. The Bible says two can only walk in agreement, only can walk if they are in agreement. Mm -hmm. You cannot move with God if you don't understand where he's at. How can you come in agreement? Yeah. How can you work with him when you don't know what he's doing? Amen? Amen. And I'm telling you, his campaign since Jesus come is to get grace to reign. Yes. So we need to comprehend that process. I want to start this morning by looking at the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 21. This is the theme. For something to reign, it has to be able to give evidence. If not, it's not reigning. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about kingdoms, like there have been four major kingdoms, me and my cousins were talking about it this morning. We know we had the Egyptian Empire. Mm -hmm. Amen? We had the Persian amen, um, Empire, Nebuchadnezzar. We had the Greek Macedonia Empire. And finally, we have the Roman. The reason why they're called empire, yes, one component is how much they expand, and the second one is how long they reign, how much decades or centuries. You, do you understand? You can't reign unless you sustain for a tremendous amount of time. Getting established and reigning is not the same thing. You can get it. Sometimes a president or someone come into power, but just as quickly as he come in, he what? Phases out. He didn't reign long. When you read the history of the, of the kingdom of God and, and the kings whom God makes salty, you see, it give, you understand, in, in the eulogy, how long they have reigned for 18 years, two decades, three decades. How long did this stay in power? So grace has to also, God didn't just establish grace, he needs grace to reign. Amen. So the Bible teaches us, so that just as sin has reign in death, mm -hmm. sin reign, and I'm going to show it to you, so sin didn't just get established. Mm -hmm. The Bible says sin, by one man, sin entered our ranks. Mm -hmm. But the Bible said sin reigned from Adam yes. all the way till Moses put the law to evaluate sin. <laughs> the Bible says sin just established. The Bible says sin reigned. Now if you look from, you understand, from Moses to, 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 to Adam you know, all the way to Jesus, it's thousands of years sin was what? Reign. In power. <laughs> and it showed great evidence of being in power. Welcome sis. <laughs> Amen? So the Bible said just as sin has reigned in death, it showed great evidence of death. So, which means similar. So, amen. Grace is unheard, undeserved favor might reign also through righteousness. Right standing with God. So the Bible says, just because sin reign, grace has to reign. Amen. And grace, how did we know sin reign? Because death was everywhere. Yeah. Something can only reign if it can show evidence. Yeah. Proof of its power, its dominance, its supremacy. And sin did. Yes. Once sin got in, you understand? Sin was in every form. Man's spirit got cut off from God. He got cut off from the living spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen? God put up the flaming sword, so man's spirit immediately start to die. Yes. Just like a tree, when you cut off the branch, the branch don't die right away. Mm -hmm. But once it stays disconnected, it will what? Die. It die. will die. Once it doesn't get what? Engrafted back into a living structure, the tree dies. Yes. Yes. You can cut a tree and engraft it into life, and it can live. But if it stays separated, what happens? It does. You understand this? So once man's spirit got cut off from the living spirit, his spirit start to die. Mm -hmm. His soul start to look for other sources to live. His soul start to die. His body. All disease are nothing more than symptoms of what? Death. Yes. The Bible said, God said, I didn't make man to die. Disease was not supposed to be in this realms. This way, the Bible said, when you return to God, there'll be no sickness and no dying, That's no right. crying anymore. That's right. In a living organism of perpetual life, there can be no death. Mm -hmm. 
It's lack of life, the case begins. So once man get cut off, sin enter and sin begin to reign. Sin reign from generation to generation. Spirits die and soul and bodies and all kind of symptoms of sin from diabetes. Sin was so good in reigning, you understand? It, it became genetic even. That you, your mom might have be diabetic and the children born with it. So sin is what? Just passing from generation to generation and culture to culture and city to city and rams to rams. It didn't care. Sin reigned. It showed it had power, you see, and it had dominance and supremacy in the human realms. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the Bible said, just as sin reigned and showed great evidence of death, that it's power, that it's a substance and it's potent, mm -hmm. so now grace must reign through righteousness. Mm -hmm. The reason, and you're going to see God brought you into righteousness, into right standing, is for one reason. So is grace can what? Reign. You see, grace is in there by what? Righteousness. Grace is in there by righteousness. Just there can be no death without what? Sin. If sin is not reigning, death can't reign. And if there's no righteousness, grace can't what? Reign. So we need to understand this process. How, one of the things you have to learn, how do I position myself in righteousness? Mm -hmm. And I'm talking here to the church. The church is in righteousness. But the church have a skewed way sometimes of looking at righteousness. Whose righteousness do you have? Jesus' righteousness. Not yours. Mm -hmm. The Bible said our righteousness is like what? Filthy a right. filthy yes. menstruation cloth. Right. You can, if you stand in that righteousness, grace can't what? Flow. That's right. So if your idea of looking at yourself and things and your, your, your outlook on your life is this. I go to church every Sunday, and I pray, and I read the Bible, and I tithe. That makes me righteous. So grace can flow. You have stopped grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your best effort, God consider it filthy. Yeah. Yeah. Your righteousness has to be this way. Because, in fact, the Bible said, God wanted to give you His righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. You have to position yourself this way. I have the righteousness of God that is founded mm -hmm. in Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And from this position or this righteousness that I am, that is Jesus, yes. grace flow ceaselessly. Mm -hmm. Grace can reign in my spirit, in my soul, in my body, in my family, in my resource because of the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. That is your righteousness. Mm -hmm. This position allows grace to flow. Yeah. You see, mm -hmm. lack of this position, you're not helping. You're actually stepping in the way. This is why God hates the proud. The proud is forever interrupting what he wants to do. They believe in themselves and their, their resource. God said they trust in their own resource in first job. Yeah. Do you understand this? Amen. Our righteousness is Jesus as our wisdom is Jesus. Jesus. Our peace is Jesus. Jesus. Our strength is Jesus. Jesus. Our salvation is Jesus. Jesus. It's all him. Amen. The apostle Paul said it best. He goes, we must decrease, get out of the picture. So he can increase. increase. Amen. This is what has to happen. I want to take a look at this process. How are we going to allow grace to flow? I just want you to look at Psalms 84 verse 11. Because what stops Psalms 84 verse 11 is because you don't quite understand Romans, Romans chapter 5 verse 21 and where we're going to look at. You don't quite get righteousness. I believe pure Christianity is when grace is reigning. Mm -hmm. I believe when grace is not reigning, we are messing it up somehow. Mm -hmm. We have a skewed outlook or position. And I believe the enemy extremely understand this. Yeah. And I don't know necessarily if the church get it. This is the process God teaching me in my life tremendously now. You know, how to stay in righteousness so he can move in the grace. For the Lord is the sun and the shield. The Lord bestow present grace. So God wants to bestow present grace. He said, I'm the sun and I'm the shield. And favor, amen, and future glory. So he said, I want to give you present grace, amen. I want to take care of your future and I want to bring you to glory. You understand? So he said, I, anything to deal with the present or your future, it's me. And all of your positioning of why he brought you into righteousness is to do these things with you. Amen. The Bible, remember this in John chapter 1, verse 17. The Bible said the law came to Moses. We have said, but grace, favor, blessing, and truth came to Jesus Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. So this is what he wants to give you. He wants to give you what Jesus brought. Yeah. When Moses brought the law, he had to give them the law. Yes. Because Jesus brings grace. Jesus brings favor. Yes. Jesus brings blessing and reality. Yes. 
Yes. The, the question is, do we, do we receive in it, and is it abounding, and you will see, it has to abound, yes. meaning excel. Yes. When, what happens, we work on everything else except what Jesus brings. We ask him for all kind of things. Here's the secret. All the things you are, it is founded in grace, favor, blessing, and reality. Amen. We want the end result, but we don't want the cause. So every time you go, Jesus, give me a car, give me a house, you may need my favor. You're always maybe one person away from God putting you in front of the right person to get the favor you need for what you're looking for. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. You're always looking. You have to, grace puts you in the right presence. Mm. Grace brings you present grace into the right present. Mm. Grace set up your future mm. and bring you into glory. Amen. Remember, Amen. Glo God is after glory. The Bible says Jesus came to bring many sons to what? Glory. glory. Amen. Yes. God is after glory. He said the whole earth, Isaiah 11, has to be filled with his knowledge. And the glory yeah. of God. So the glory of God can be seen. Amen. The old game is what he's after. But he's trying to get his children renewing our mind to catch up with him. Yes. He's way ahead. Always have been, always will be. Yes. But he's working hard to get the church to what? Catch up. Yes. yes. The church do just about anything, but not trying to move in what Jesus brings. Great favor, blessing, and reality. Amen? So the Bible said, it went on to say, honor and splendor and heavenly bliss. Amen? Then look what happened. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk oh, uprightly. Oh, so yes. he don't want to withhold anything. No. It's our craziness stopping him from yes. bestowing it upon us. Yeah. Or our ignorance. It's Hosea 4, 6. My people are dying for lack yes. of knowledge. Yes. Do you understand? The whole problem is ignorance. The problem is not the devil. It's not even sin anymore. No. It is True. ignorance. True. Ignorance True. is your greatest enemy True. right True. now. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. Uh, some of you know this story. This is a true story with me. I've been doing this for a long time now, almost going on two and a half to three decades. And sometimes I get tired. I used to actually. I used to get tired and I used to feel fatigued and I go, Lord, I don't know much more. I can do this. And I didn't like the answer the Lord gave me. I was busy and I'm teaching a lot and I'm sharing and I'm you know, making sure all the ministries are running and, and what we just don't do here, we do, we, we do global, but you know, we're telling out stuff. And I, and I thought the Lord would kind of sympathize with me. And the Lord said this to me, you're only running at 10%. Oh. I'm like, what? What do you mean? I'm running at 10%. And, the, and you guys know how the Lord teach, te taught me that lesson, it was everywhere. But after I accept this truth and I change, it's amazing how my energy increased. Amen. Who was the one stopping it? Yeah. Me. Yeah. I had an outlook that I'm doing enough, so I shouldn't, you know, my energy should be at a certain level, based on how much I'm doing. Yeah. I have decided to bar the bar. Yes, the but from God's standard, he goes, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. You're not doing a fraction of what I want you to do yet, boy. <laughs> You're doing 10% of what I have put in you. Yeah. It's like Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah was complaining, he's so tired, God go. Let me get this clear. You run with men and they wore you out. He goes, how are you going to run with horses? He said, how? He goes, my plan is for you to run at the level of a horse run. Yes. But you are running with men and they're what? Warring you out. And many of us, because of our mindset, yes. these set points, these blocks that we put in, we put God in a box. Yes. And the reason is, we don't quite get grace. No. We don't quite get favor. Mm. We don't quite get blessing. Mm. Not the way I, we don't quite get what Jesus brings. We worship Jesus, but do you know what he brings? Mm. Imagine, did Moses just brought the law and keep the law? Mm. Imagine they worship the law, whole ten commandments, so lovely, how thou art great and stone. Did, that's what God sent Moses to do. What did Moses have to do with the law? Teach it to them. Mm. Give it to them. God will write it on your hands, hands. on your forehead and your door. Your they have to know it. Yes. He said, not just to you, to all your generation too. Yes. yes. You have to know it. Yes. Jesus didn't just bring grace, favor, and blessing. You have to know it. Yes. You have to understand how to operate in it. Or you are or you're making God withhold the things that He don't want to withhold. You're blocking his glory and your potential and the people around you. Mm -hmm. I remember my wife went to a conference yesterday and she said something to me and it struck me. One of the speakers said this, they were speaking of Lazarus. Mm -hmm. And they go, notice, Lazarus was not the one that took off the bandage off of Lazarus. No. It was those what? Around yeah. him. Around. Mm -hmm. And the question is, who bandages are you taking off? Mm -hmm. 
If you're not operating in grace, favor, blessing, and reality, you ain't going to be taken off any bandages. Mm -hmm. And God expects the bandage, people around you, the church, to take the bandage off. Yes. But you have to be operating where the Spirit of the Lord is in freedom. Yes. 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 You can't help nobody if you are not in a position mm -hmm. where you are, you see, you're tearing in excellence. Mm -hmm. So God needs you to understand grace, favor, amen? You know, I was at, a, I don't even remember her to be truthful, because I meet a lot of people. I was at a store Friday, and there was a lady behind me, she asked me if I was in the line, I go, yeah. Anyhow, I did my transaction, and I leave, and she ran out in the parking lot, and she caught me. And she go, you're Frank, right? I go, yes. She go, you don't remember me? I go, no. She go, you took my son to the hospital. Two of my sons used to work for you, and I go, I still can't remember to this moment. So pray the Lord and give me a revelation of them. And she goes, they're now 25, and today's their birthday, they're twin, and you, you took them to the hospital, you took them to the hospital. But I can't picture it to be true. And she goes, and you're a Christian, right? And I go, you know a lot about me, but I don't know. <laughs> Somehow in our encounter, my life, the grace, had impact her. Yes. I mean, it's extensive that I can't, she clearly didn't impact me that way, because I can't remember. I, I, I don't remember none of it. But it leave. I, I don't know, this must have been eight or nine years ago. It leave a lasting impact in her. Mm -hmm. yes. That even after so long, she can remember details. Mm -hmm. Including, I'm a Christian and I don't remember even talking to her. Mm -hmm. I go, mean, yes, I'm a pastor. She goes, oh, I knew it. <laughs> you understand? But yeah. my, my point is, you yes. have to be in a position yes. that when the moment mm -hmm. happens, mm -hmm. you can take off the... Are you listening yes. to me? Amen. <laughs> this is expected... Yes, of the church and the requirement of God. Yes. This is to abound, as you will see, in grace, favor, blessing, and reality. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. If I was in such bondage, I would have no time to deal with her son or she is you. Yes. Right. Do you understand? Exactly. That would have just been more bondage, more burden on top of my own yes. burden. Mm -hmm. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. But if you're operating in grace, God will carry your burden. He didn't say you ain't going to have. He said, but I have grace sufficient for you. Amen. Amen. He said, I have enough favor around you. You understand? That yes. I, I don't care what the trouble, something, I'm going to make it work for you. Amen. I have enough blessing that I'm chasing you down that I can bless you. Amen. No matter where you are. Amen. I'm telling you, you know, I was trying to do something, and, and the Lord gave me this word personally. Mm -hmm. And I'm fighting to do this thing, and he got listen to me. <laughs> I want you to remember what yes. Jesus brought. Mm. Yes. And I go, Lord, what does that have to do with what I'm trying to say? It has everything to do with what you're trying to do. You're yes. trying to do it in your own strength. Yeah. I want you to focus and meditate on what Jesus brings. Yes. I want you to really learn how to move in grace. Yes. This is how this message comes about. I want you to really understand mm -hmm. how much I favor you. Mm -hmm. No matter where you go, I'm going to make amazing things happen for you. Mm -hmm. I know much I'm going to bless you mm -hmm. and keep you in the reality, you don't waste your time and your energy. Amen. Only in truth. The word truth translates as reality. Real reality mm -hmm. is the place God wants you working. Yes. This is where you should be. He said, I'm telling you, the things you think are difficult, watch what happens. Mm -hmm. Believe me. And as I start to understand this thing, it's amazing what is happening. Things that have taken me six years to do, I'm getting it done in days. Or it's just, it just happened. Yes. People mm -hmm. just walk up to me. I go, hey, did the Lord tell me to do this? Or you are this, let me do this for you. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Grace. If you... Mm. Amen. We don't want... The, the Bible said in Psalms 84, verse 11, God said, I don't want to withhold no good thing from you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the Bible said, you understand? It, it flows off of righteousness. Grace right. only reign off of righteousness. Yes. Right position, right outlook, right thinking, right feeling. Do you understand? Right belief. Amen. Right self-talk. Thank you.